Welcome back, Controls Champions, to another installment of the PLC Programming Cookbook. Today we're going to talk about three-way switches. And I'm just going to call it three-way switches because it's like if you had three-way switches in your house, say a, a switch at either end of the hallway so that you can turn the lights on when you're entering or exiting from either side. Sometimes we do the same thing in industrial automation. Maybe we have uh, some kind of manual adjustment that we might want to turn off a a locking mechanism or a brake or something on both sides of the machine or change a mode from different places. Obviously, if we have an HMI, then you know we, we've got other options. But if we're using mechanical switches, then it's just going to be an on or off signal from each one of those switches. We're probably not going to have two inputs to the PLC coming from each switch the way a, a normal three-way switch would work. Of course, we can actually wire it the way we would wire it in our house on a machine. It's just, uh, you know, sometimes it's nice to be able to have logic in the PLC that also contributes to that function. So without further ado, I've got two switches here. I've got a light and just like that hallway example, we're going to be turning the hallway light off from either end. So how does the ladder logic look for this? We've got the light is just a regular coil. If switch one is on and switch two is off, then the light's gonna be on. If switch one is off and switch two is on, then the light's gonna be on. If both switches are on, the light will be off because we don't have a condition that allows that through. And if both switches are off, then the light will be off. So we've covered all four potential cases there. Let's just quick simulate this to show what it looks like. If I turn on light switch one, the light turns on. Turn that back off. If I turn on light switch two, the light turns on. What if I have them both on? It turns off again. So from either end of the hall, I can always turn it on and off, no matter what the setting is at the other end of the hall. So very simple. I am going to talk in another video about another way to do this kind of thing. Um, the reason I would use this method for a three-way switch is just because it's so simple. It's two branches on a small rung to control that output. When we start talking about more than two switches, I'm going to show you another example here. This is what we I would call a four-way switch. This is again a house wiring term. We have three switches. You see it starts to get more complicated. And this still functions, there's nothing wrong with it. But as we get higher counts of more and more switches, this starts to get, I think, a little cumbersome. It's more confusing to read and troubleshoot. It takes a little more thinking to kind of put this together. So in the other video, when I talk about the other method for doing this, that would be my preference for higher switch counts. So let's look through how this works. It's kind of the same idea, but again, because we've got three switches, it feels more complicated. This branch says if switch one is on and the other two are not. This branch says if switch two is on and the other two are not. This one says if switch three is on, and the other two are not. And then this one says if they're all on. And so that's half of the scenarios and the other half of the scenarios we want the light to be off. So again, we'll simulate. I should be able to turn any of these switches on or off and it will toggle that output. So now from three different locations, say we're uh, across a, a living room kitchen combination where we've got a couple doors and a hallway, all with a switch that turns on the lights in the room. Again, that's a house wiring example. Um, in a machine, maybe we're, you know, turning on brakes again for some manual adjustment or we're turning, uh, you know, setting manual mode versus auto mode or whatever. We could have real physical switches at different operating stations to turn things on and off. I hope that was helpful in thinking through how this kind of thing works. Um, there are a million applications in real industry for this kind of thing. Do let me know if, if you've got any questions, comments, thoughts, other things you want to see. I'm going to put this example file up on the internet for you to download. 
check the description for a link. And again, this is Codasys, so you can download this and run this exact example to play with it uh, because the software is available for free on their website. Cool, see you next time. Thanks, John. The weather is beautiful here at Brain Machine. Looking at the map, we can see a massive subscriber front coming right through here with a high chance of likes and shares. And I would bet you we'll see some comments in the near future as well. Don't miss the great weather. Click here to keep it coming. Back to you, John.